Hi everyone, Omid from CodeLab here, and welcome to the first video in our series on APIs. This video will be discussing how to just make some basic API calls using an application called Insomnia. Now, again, just to quickly remind you all as a prerequisite, hopefully you have all read the big text block above me in Notion, sort of explaining a lot of the basic concepts of APIs, of APIs because I will not be going into deep depth about those things here in this video. You should ideally have already read it. Now, as we kind of mentioned towards the end, making an API call is a lot harder than you might think. There's a lot of extra data and stuff that has to be processed along the way. Um, and if, you, if you're trying to do that programmatically, it's pretty difficult. Um, but thankfully, there's a great software where you can actually test your API calls just to know if you're doing things right before you start coding. Um, there's two really popular variants of this, one called Insomnia, which I will be showing you all how to use, and another that you might've heard of called Postman. Personally, and we here at CodeLab feel like Insomnia is a bit more beginner friendly, but Postman is great. If you know that, feel free to use it. Um, but that is what we use to test our API calls. And you'll sort of see what I, what I mean by that in a minute, because um, normally when we write code, like we're not sure, like you can come in not even knowing if your API works and then also not knowing if you wrote the code right. This sort of takes one of those two steps out of the guessing process, because with Insomnia, you can just test and say, hey, like, does my API even work? Because Insomnia knows how to make the request and how to make them properly for you. You do not have to worry about any of the programmatic stuff here, which is why this is also such a great beginning point for us to start learning about making API calls and requests. So you'll want to come to this website here, insomnia.rest, conveniently, REST APIs, um, and you can just download it, free program, very lightweight, awesome stuff. And once you download it, before we go any further and actually open it up, I do want to let you guys know about this website right here, jsonplaceholder.typeacode.com. Um, basically, this is a website that you can use just to make like, like free API calls to like some random link. Now, this just returns some random data. It's mostly just kind of garbage, but it's a place where you can test API calls because they do have their own APIs and it just returns very simple data. It's just very clean and it's great just for kind of testing the waters and making sure that you know the main big API concepts. Now, we're gonna head over to Insomnia here and on the left, you should have nothing right now. So um, ideally, you guys should be able to right click inside of here and then click a new request and you can type out some request name that you want and then you should be met with an empty screen right here. You should not see anything that I'm seeing right now. If I go ahead and make a new request called like request two, it, everything should now be empty. So a few things to walk through and I'm gonna kind of point out where a lot of the concepts that we just learned, not all, but most of them kind of come into play with Insomnia. So again, Insomnia, there's no coding. You just tell it what API URL endpoint you want to hit, what type of request it is. You can give it the authorization or body if need be, and then it will automatically display and format the response back for you. Again, no coding. You're kind of just like passing parameters. They take care of that. So you can just test if the API works. Um, and that's why we use this a lot to test if our APIs that we're making work because testing them through the code, like you're testing your code and the API. We want to just test the API, you know? So walking through this interface right here, I'll make this a little bit bigger so that you all can see it. So top left, right up here, the first thing you should always do and one of the most common mistakes that people forget to change is what type of request this is. We are going to be sampling a get request here. So click get. This right here is your URL. We'll get to that in a second. This right here is your body. So the great thing about the body is that there's many different types. We really only deal with JSON ones here at CodeLab, but you can click on that body and then it will it will allow you to actually start typing text. Like I can start making like a JSON document to pass in as my body. Now, obviously that will not be necessary because this is a get request, not a put or a post, for example. Um, there's also authorization. So there's a lot of different types of authorization, um, especially when it comes to API calls. Um, some of the most popular ones that you might see are like basic auth, OAuth 2.0, or bearer tokens. Um, personally, I've worked with those three in my past experience, but for right now, we're not gonna deal with that or how to use it. You can deal with it when the time comes if your project does have authorization as a part of making your API calls. Otherwise, this is where you would do it. Again, it's a pretty intuitive interface. They just kind of ask for the fields that they need. You go and find them, give it to them, and then they'll handle all of that. Um, right up here, you can also add query parameters. You can type them yourself into the, into the URL up here, or you can put them right here if you want. Um, kind of goes both ways, whatever you personally prefer. Um, same thing with header values. If you want to add header stuff here, you can. Normally, unless you're getting kind of like niche into like more advanced APIs, there won't really be header stuff. 
There is, again, some stuff like behind the scenes that I'll show you, but that's all handled by Insomnia or whatever sort of library that you use to programmatically make your requests, which we will be covering in a future video. And I'm out of here, docs. These are like, this is like documentation, don't really need this. So let's do a get request. So this website right here, they actually have a link um, that I actually already have ready right here. Um, it's just the regular URL slash posts slash one. And the, the, great, the great thing about this is that if you actually go to the link, that's really what an API request is. Like just telling your browser like, hey, like I want to go to this link. So if I open up a new tab and then I go to this, you'll see that I actually get this exact page back. I didn't have to do anything special to get this text to show up. I was not trying to trick you guys. An API is really no more than just like a URL, like we kind of mentioned in the notes. Like it's just the place to go to and you get some data back on a page here. It's all just plain text and it's formatted like JSON in a very specific way so that it can be parsed through programmatically. So obviously like there's no styling or anything here. It's just like regular plain JSON text. Now, if we actually take that URL and put it right here into our get thing right here, we can actually perform a real get request on this guy. Um, and then of course, like this this place, this page, it's very, very basic, no auth, query header, docs, or body, or, or anything needed. And if you click the send button, you'll actually get a response back. So this right hand side pane, your response details. So obviously this color up here, this is the most important thing, your status code with a quick little description next to it saying, we got a 200 response back, that's green, that, that means good, and it was an okay request. Here's how long the request made, if you need to time it. And here's a preview of the data received back. So we actually received a JSON object back. It's the exact same thing that we saw right here. It's just now formatted into a JSON variable that we can preview that's six lines long. And you see now we have the quotes on the left, just like you guys might've seen in my JavaScript videos on the left with some quotes around them. And then on the right, you know, like the numbers and the text, very similar to how it's done with JavaScript objects, which is what, hence the name JSON. So that's the preview. And then also just something that I want to point out, if you click on this header thing right here, you can actually see how many header variables there are. Like this is where a lot of that metadata is stored, like we mentioned. So, you know, things like the date, the content type, like, oh, is this JSON? Are we using a specific character set like the UTF-8 standard? Don't need to know what that is, but there's just a ton of stuff here. And again, this is why like making your own API calls is kind of difficult. So that's why we use programs like Insomnia. And in, in our next video, um, certain libraries that will automatically fulfill all, like all of this stuff for us so that we can just worry about the main parameters that we need to mess with, like the type of request, the API endpoint URL, the body of the authorization, things that are more important to us, not like setting the date or like whatever X rate limit limit means, you know, like that's not really something that we care about. And some of this stuff is actually sent back to us as well by the people who make the API. And again, when we get to making APIs, there's also libraries that do that stuff con conversely for us because we're not really particularly concerned with this metadata stuff. But anyways, that is it for our first video on how to use Insomnia. Hopefully you all found this pretty useful and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you.